Well, I see you've got the um, got the Model A up on the lift. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, you got the Model A up there. What you doing? I got uh, new mufflers coming in for it. I got new mufflers on there, but they wound up being way too loud. So I ordered some three-chambered Flowmasters. It's supposed to be in today sometime. I don't know, but they sound pretty good. Or if I remember from that rod, it was loud. Whoop. There we go. There, I can see some of that. Get that drive shaft sticker. But I was going to go down to Corinth next Sunday. They're having a little show down there. Uh, it was supposed to be last Sunday, but it rained them out. So this weekend is one that they're going to have it. And uh, before I drive from here to Corinth, I got to change those pipes. Because just coming back from the lake over there, mm -hmm. I got a headache from this damn thing making so much noise. Yeah. I mean, it sounds cool idling, but when you're running down the road. <sighs> well, yeah, probably because uh, I guess the pipes are like come still up under the cab. They they come out right up underneath that cab, and I bet you get all of that acoustic sound coming up into your cab while you're, while you're driving. Well, even if they run out the back, they were way too loud. Yeah. There was too much resonation. They were supposed to be, they called them the hush power that, uh, that uh, Flowmaster's trying to push off as their latest and greatest technology. Well, the technology looks good, but the reality is they ain't any quieter than the than the 40 chamber, the uh, two chamber 40 series. And I never did like those, they were just way too loud. But I put a set of three chambers, Flowmasters, on a truck that I sold a while ago that sounded bitching and it didn't break your eardrums when you're running down the road. So I talked Dennis into buying them and putting them on this truck. Oh yeah, I so heard that. It, really sounds good even when you're nailing it. Mm -hmm. it. It's got a nice rumble, but it doesn't have that resonating, you know, the... Been a lot done to this since you were here last. Yeah, I don't recall seeing that. Did you put all this in? It's the Panhard bar. Then I put the airbags on it and mounted them. I had to have them on there to figure out where my right position is going to be. And there's still going to wind up being changes because I put this new sway bar on there mm -hmm. and I tilted this down to where these arms would be parallel. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is in bringing this down, I think I got it too close to here because this rear end still has to be kicked up. Yeah. And at right height, it would be okay. But if it bottomed out, the drive shaft would hit this. Yeah. So I may wind up putting it into a cross member in and running it this way higher. But I'm not sure yet. That's the hell of it. You think you've got it all figured out, and then halfway down the line, you got to change everything. Yeah. Like so this. have you got the body uh, that you're going to put on? Like, what's your plan for the actual vehicle itself? Well, the body is out there. That black coop. I don't even think I noticed that last time. <laughs> oh. That's the one that's going on it. Okay. I got a few modifications to make to it, but... Like I gotta cut this firewall off and build a new firewall to clear the V8. But this is such a solid old body. Still has all the inner structure in it. Not rusted out bad. Yeah. But I've gotta make some modifications. I'm gonna cut the bottom off the gas tank and put a 32 size style dash in it. Mm -hmm. And then I wanna put AC in the, up under there. Nice. And I got all new gauges for it. And then the, it's set up for a rumble seat. What? Yeah, but I'm not going to keep that, I don't think. I think I'm going to rig up hinges to do a regular trunk because back here, up to about here, is going to be a gas tank. Mm-hmm. 
There won't and be any leg room, huh? Yeah, and this back here is going to have to be taken out and changed because the way I've done the frame, when it gets to about here, it gets kicked up. So instead of the frame being down here, it's mm -hmm. going to be up here. Yeah. And so I've got to cut that. And then what I do, I also have to cut the, uh, the subframe and make new subframes that come up and back to mount on the frame. Those two pieces I was showing you in the shop there, I said were my subframes. Yeah. I made those up because I'm going to have to use them to kick this up and back so that the rear suspension sets up in there higher. So there's not going to be that much room for any kind of a rumble seat back here because of the gas tank and this is going to get raised up. So I'm just going to clear all of that out and then I may just turn around and put stock trunk hinges on here instead of the rumble seat. Are you going to have it open up like a normal trunk or yeah. are you going to keep yeah. it like that? I think so. Now I may change my mind on that because the convenience of this being up like this, uh -huh. one good thing is it's going to make my cast easier to get at. Oh, yeah. My cast nut's going to be here. And if I do it this way, then I've got to reach around the back and, and it's got to come way up for me to get to that filler. Yeah. But it needs modifying and this whole back underside gets cut away and new floors and cross members put in it. It was such a good old solid body, I couldn't pass it. Was this a, the bumper? A spare tire mount. Oh, spare tire, okay. I was like, that's awfully huge. <laughs> I've got three or four of those. I don't know why I wind up with them. <laughs> Nobody uses them except people that, that build jennies. And then I got to order all new glass for it, new windshield, because I want safety plate instead of yeah. temper. So is it? It's pretty easy then to get get glass for these old. Oh yeah, it's all cars? flat glass. Go to a glass shop and give them a pattern and say, "Here's what I want." Oh, okay. That, I mean that sedan in there has got amber tint in it, and I took the guy part of it. I took some of the old glass that was in it down, and he just cut out new ones for it, and there I put them back in it. And this comes off and undoes it. This is an aftermarket windshield frame. Yeah. It's aluminum. And you raise it up and pull it back and it slides off and you can take it out and take it apart and slide new glass in it. Now I've seen a lot of these old uh, Model A's and such. They have a lot of wood in them. Is that? Oh yeah. So a lot of them are kind of wood based. That's uh, interesting. Model T's and Model A's they built the wooden structure first and then they built the body around it the panels because they came in individual panels and they could attach them to the to the wood framework so early model cars most of them started out with a wooden buck and then they attached all the sheet metal to the wood so there wasn't a whole lot of structure to them now that sedan in there, that Tudor I built, I ripped all the wood out of it and everything has been done with steel. Uh, I put a steel header in it, I put steel frames around. Anywhere there was wood, it got steel. Because, you know, the termites quit holding hands, it'll fall yeah. apart. 